What's up guys, today I'm going to show you the easiest way to understand AI agents. There's a lot of noise out there about agents, but we're going to cut through all of that and I give you a super clear explanation. I've put together a simple diagram to break down the core components, like the agents chat model, memory, tools, and how does it interact together. Then we're going to jump into NNN and I walk you through how to build your first functional AI agent for events creation on Google Calendar in just a few minutes. You'll see exactly how inputs come in, how the agent thinks, and how it uses tools to get the things done. Before jumping in, remember to subscribe our channel, remember to check out our free school community for more AI guides like that. Now let's start with Miro board. Here on the board I outlined uh, the basic components of every AI agent. I suppose the core component to start with is AI agent itself. You should think of AI agent as a smart helper that can understand what you want and take actions to help you. Just like a human assistant can listen to your requests and then send an email or look up information for you. And AI agent can do absolutely the same things just using artificial intelligence. The next block is input and input this is what you provide to AI agent. This is either a question you ask or a task you wanted to perform. Think of that as the information going into your agent. The next component is chat model. Chat model acts like a brain of AI agent. It's a type of artificial intelligence, often large language model, that allows the agent to understand your requests and process responses. Memory. Memory helps agent to remember past interactions with the user. Adding memory helps agent to understand current input in relation to whatever has been discussed before. The greatest example is uh, with a birthday. Let's say if you specify your birthday and over ask this information, let's say five interactions later, the AI agent will be able to answer. The next component is system message. System message is about instructions that you give to your agent. Instructions can define agent role, behavior, what tools it's gonna use and how it's gonna use them. The next component is tool and tool is a simple function that a agent can perform. And there are a few examples, for instance, sending emails, creating events on your Google Calendar, creating a contact in your database, etc. And the last component is output, and output is a result of processing your input. It can be a direct answer to your question or a confirmation that a task or a tool has been completed. Now let's jump into NNN and let's create your first AI agent. I'm gonna create empty workflow. I'm gonna call it AI agent. Here I'm gonna add first step and I will specify a agent. As you can see, it automatically adds a few modules. The first one is when chat message received, and this is something related to our input from our schema in Miro. For now, as you can see, it's outlined red, and this is because we didn't add any chat model, which we're going to fix now. So I'm going to click this chat model. At this point, NNN gonna suggest all possible language models you can add at this point. I want to point out that all language models are different from each other depending on specific task performances, but here and in development as well, in most cases, I use OpenAI chat model. So to connect new credentials, you're gonna do a few simple steps. You're gonna set here, create new credential. You're gonna go to your OpenAI account and here you're gonna set create new secret key. You can call it whatever you want create secret key, and then you're gonna copy it and insert it over here. After pressing save, uh, you shall see the message create credential successfully created. One more important note, before using the actual key, make sure you made some top-ups on your uh, billing account on OpenAI. This is something you should do just to avoid uh, messages from OpenAI, like uh, you have unavailable fonts or something. So to fix that, you're gonna go to your account, settings, uh, billing, and here just add some credit balance on your account. Now, since we connected our chat model to the agent, we can start to communicate. And so we can write something. As you can see, since uh, the model is connected, uh, the agent successfully responds to my messages uh, to whatever I will specify. It accepts my inputs in here chat window and it sends outputs. The next point we're gonna get is chat memory. And at this point, I'm going to refer to the example with a birthday. So here, if I specify now my birthday, let's say my birthday is on 7th of March. Since for now the agent doesn't have any memory, 
if I over ask uh, like when is my birthday, it literally won't remember. So you can see it replies, I don't have any personal information about you, including your birthday. If you'd like to share your birthday or ask about something else, feel free to let me know. So even though it was one interaction ago, it doesn't remember anything. And this is why we are connecting memory. Hey guys, also check out our paid school community where you'll find global course with focus on privacy, how to set up super base and even things like how to edit applications with Cursor. Additionally, we've got a bunch of AI guides over here and calls to times a week. To add memory, we're gonna press this icon. We're gonna, for now, choose simple memory. The difference from other modules is simple memory as simple as hell. Like you don't need to set up any credentials. You don't need to adjust anything. But at the same time, with such memory, every information, every interaction will be kept inside NNN memory. And the difference is, let's say, in contrast to Postgres, uh, you won't be able to later get information about uh, user interactions. So use it for or really simple cases like what we have now. If you open up the simple memory module, as you can see over here, we've got session ID coming from connected chat trigger node. It's about this module. JSON session ID is basically the session ID uh, of the chat window. So, so as you can see, every new chat will have its specific session. Its session will be passed over here and the session will be associated with every new message from the specific chat. Now, since the memory added, we can come back to our example with birthday. Let's check it out. Now I'm gonna ask when is my birthday and as you assume, it will remember, yeah. The next step we're gonna handle is adding instructions. Typically, I create instructions via ChatGPT, so I'm going to specify that I would like to generate system message for personal AI system that will help to create events on Google Calendar and will use user input to set up time and attendee. I get the response and I like it, I'm going to use it. Uh, in my agent. To specify instructions for system message, you're gonna go to your uh, agent, you're gonna set an option, you're gonna set system message, and here you're gonna insert whatever message should be. Inside NNN, you can find a really uncomfortable to work with a large text in fixed positions. So uh, I suggest using expressions, which lets you open up the window. So since we're going to use uh, Google Calendar create event tool, AI should be able to know about time somehow. By default, any AI has got like some kind of cut off. And what it means is its knowledge is really literally cut off until like some point. For example, uh, for ChatGPT, cut off is until 2023. What it means for you is it really doesn't have any idea of what time it is now. So for this reason, we're going to specify it over here. So I'm going to say time now and here I'm going to say hey, it's now and inside NNN it will return the current timestamp. The next step is we're going to use at first tool and the tool will be Google create event. So you're gonna choose Google calendar tool. I'm gonna instantly change naming. I'm gonna choose my calendar and now we will start filling in different parameters. So for now, by default, you can see NNN sets start time as now and end time now plus one hour. This won't work for our use case because user can specify, hey, I want the time to be tomorrow, let's say 2.30 PM or something. So somehow now, I need to provide the way to map user input, right? How to do that is to use from AI parameters. So I'm going to press this icon and I'm going to then close it. And as you can see, there is from AI parameter popping up over here. From AI is something which won't be hard coded, but will be provided by literally your language model connected. In our case, meeting start time will be provided by AI based on user input. If you check whatever inside, you can see that from AI parameter has got a key, which is uh, basically the name of the parameter, then description. In this case, it's empty and then type. In this case, uh, it's a string. For now, I'm going to use uh, like simple name. So I'm going to remove description and type. And and I will call it meeting start. Then I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna insert it here and we'll just rename it to meeting end. So meeting end will be and we'll add here description to give more clarity, like at 30 minutes plus meeting start. Let's go for other fields. So the next field we are gonna add is attendee and attendees, it's about people who are gonna attend the meeting except for your default account. So I'm gonna just copy this expression, paste it here. I'm gonna replace the name to attendee 
in the next parameters we're gonna add description to have description on the meeting let's copy that insert it here let's change the naming to description now let's add summary summary in uh, terms of google events stands for uh, the names of the meeting let's specify here meeting name so now let's check it out let's now specify hello as you can see from now since uh, we changed uh, instructions it behaves a little bit differently it expects now some specific input in terms of google calendar events and stuff like this so let's give it some input i will say hey yes i want to schedule a meeting with some person we are going to discuss role of ai agent in business tomorrow to 30 pm now as specified in instructions it's gonna confirm details of the meeting before creating and i will say hey this sounds good you can see the response that the meeting has been successfully created it sends you details and it sends you even meeting link which we're going to check out soon so now let's check out link it leads to our calendar and as you can see over here yes i see that there is a meeting created for 2 30 pm for tomorrow given today is uh, 5th of may everything is absolutely correct if something is wrong and doesn't work you always should check out logs as you can see logs start with ai agent and then it's going to give you step-by-step -step explanation of what happened during your interactions whatever module you deal with you always will see input and output if we check out create event tool we can see that as input there was everything we specified meeting start meeting end attendee description meeting name and in output we can see the response the id of the meeting the summary start time end time attendees and all additional information for now what if we don't want to specify attendee email every single time we interact with our ai agent what if we would like to have our own let's say database of contacts where we could get a contact email by name name or whatever so let's go for that so for context we're going to have simple context table with a uh, name and email our context to connect the tool you're going to press this plus icon type air table find air table tool and the first thing you're going to set is uh, your credentials here you're going to press create new credentials to set up your access token or go to your air table account go to builder hub here in personal access tokens uh, create new token here in scopes uh, make sure to add whatever you need but for this use case you will need whatever mentioned here and then for access you're gonna add all resources and press create token once token is generated copy it insert it over here and press save the next point is uh, in operation change to search inside your base choose the base you work with in our case we are working with contact CRM for table choose the table you work with in filter by formula specify that the formula will be filled by the name will be populated by AI based on contact name provided by user now since the new tool is added we are going to change instructions accordingly I'm going to chat gpt and here we'll specify that i want to change instructions a bit i will use my contacts air table base if attendee is present user will provide contact name and a agent will need to find contact and base first and create event with him so let's go for that okay system message updated we're gonna now insert it again here in system instructions so now let's check it out i'm going to specify the message like this i want to have a meeting with philip tomorrow 3 30 pm we'll talk about how business can benefit from using ai automation so let's go for it for now you can see that before using create event tool it's gonna use uh, airtable search tool for finding actual contacts so here is what it's saying i found philip email address here are details description discuss discussion of how business can benefit from using ai automations would you like to confirm and yes uh, uh i confirm Confirm. As you can see, uh, there is again link to my Google Calendar, and uh, if I open uh, the link, yes, there was a meeting with Philip created discussion on how business can benefit from using AI automations. So this is how you can simply set up your first AI agent. If you'd like, you can even complicate it, and instead of using trivial chat modules, you can connect it to Telegram or connect it to webhooks. All of this stuff is inside our channel. Make sure to check it out. If you face any questions, please let us know in comments. Thank you and see you soon.